Check the description for the following discount codes. Right, this, this video is um, it's, it's not going to be a huge amount to use to everybody, which is a slightly strange way to start the video, but you may find it interesting whether you're in my position or not. It's really going to depend on what CPU you've got, what GPU you've got, whether you're looking to upgrade or whether you've been trying to upgrade over the last 12 months like I have to a new GPU unsuccessfully because the prices are still stupid. So yes, watch on if you're interested um, and don't watch on if you're not. So I ended up recently upgrading my CPU and my RAM. I'm still unable to get a GPU for a reasonable price. And my plan was always to upgrade the GPU and then the CPU and the RAM a little while afterwards as the Ryzen 5000 series came out. Now, couldn't get a GPU, so I thought, I wonder how much difference it will make upgrading my CPU and my RAM. Um, not the quantity of RAM, I've still got 32 gig, which is what I had before, but the speed of the RAM, going from 3200 megahertz to 3600 megahertz, and going from a 3800X, which is what's here now, this is my old stuff, to a 5800X. You know, looking around online at the reviews and the benchmarks, the 5800X is a, or the 5000 series in general, much, much, faster than the 3000 series CPUs. And people are seeing good increases in performance by just upgrading the CPU and the RAM, keeping with their existing GPU. Now, for flat screen games, my 2800 and my 3800X and my 32 gig of 3200 megahertz RAM could run everything flat out at sort of 1440p, 120 hertz, no problem at all. But for VR, which obviously I play a lot of, um, I can't run my Quest 2, or when I had it, the G2, at native resolution at 90 hertz, let alone 120 hertz. I have to turn the settings down, you know, and this bugs me because I want to be able to see everything as good as it can possibly be, especially in VR. So, anyway, I got the upgrades, and I've installed them, and I've been testing out different titles in VR, like I say, I didn't bother with flat screen benchmarking or anything because it's, it can already run it all flat out, there's no point. So yeah, this is what I've been doing today. And I opted for four individual sticks of single rank RAM, 3600 megahertz, um, to keep a one-to-one -one ratio with the Infinity Fabric Clock, which runs at 1800 megahertz, DDR, double data rate, 1800, 1800, 36. 100. Uh, and from what I read online, running four single rank um, sticks versus a pair of dual rank sticks gains you anywhere between 5 and 15% performance increase uh, over running dual rank RAM. So did everything optimally to see just how much of a difference this will make. And this is specifically in VR gaming here. This isn't for productivity. Obviously for productivity, the new 5800X is gonna kick the arse of the 3800X. So for my video editing and things like that, it's all very useful as is the extra RAM speed. But we're talking about VR gaming here specifically, PC VR. And what I found was kind of interesting. In most titles, there was a small increase, almost margin of error type increase. We're talking maybe five frames a second, perhaps. Uh, and the way I tested this was, you know, I loaded up a game and I basically stood in exactly the same spot, looked around, you know, examined my hands, whatever gun I was holding. If I was like in Dirt Rally, for example, I'd be sat in the cockpit of a car and I'd be looking around, trying to keep the rendering as uniform as I can so that when I then swapped out these for the new ones, I could load up the same titles and do exactly the same thing as what I did previously. You know, sit in the same car on the same stage with the same weather, all the same settings, have a little look around and um, load up uh, Stormland or um, Half-Life Alex or Zero Calibre and, and you know, be stood in exactly the same spot right at the beginning of a level, examining the same gun, you know, and looking around at the same scenery to try and keep the test as fair as I could. Now, yeah, most titles didn't really see too much of a bump, but Zero Calibre actually saw quite a large increase. So what I want to do is roll the original clip now, which is with my original 3800X and 3200 megahertz RAM. We hover around 85 to 90 FPS here whilst taking a peek at the gun and you pan around, it's still high 70s, low 80s, when I look to the left, and I think when I look to the right, 
it actually goes up a touch, 93-ish, but you know, hovering the 80s to 90s there really. And again, you pull the gun out and it drops down into the 80s. So that's what we got with that. When I then put in the new CPU and RAM, what I actually saw was an increase of up to 120 FPS or Hertz, which is what the um, refresh rate is obviously capped at. So that is actually quite a large difference. And yes, it's varying a reasonable amount, but we're 110, 120 to the left, 110, 115 in the middle, the odd dip here and there. And I'm sure I'll pull out my gun in a second to have a look at that, presumably. Yeah, here it comes. And again, we're still over 100 frames a second, whereas before we were in the low to mid 80s. Now, I only tested like four or five tiles, and most of them only showed maybe a 5 FPS different, but this title here really benefited from those upgrades. Now, now maybe the other titles are more GPU bound, and this one perhaps isn't, in which case the CPU was able to stretch its legs a little bit more. But it was just interesting to see. Um, you know, in Dirt Rally, for example, I did actually play all the games as well as just record static scenes for testing purposes. Um, Dirt Rally certainly was slightly smoother. Well, in fact, all the titles were slightly smoother. They were noticeably so. And we're, you know, we're talking when I'm pushing everything whereby it's going to drop frames rather than just turning it all down so it can hold a solid 80, you know, 80 hertz, 90 hertz or whatever. There's, there's no point testing it if you turn it down so that you know it can do it. That would just be silly. So yeah, in spite of not huge FPS gains in most titles, there was an overall smoothness improvement but with this one title in particular, we see a massive leap there. So this is why the video is kind of like not applicable to everybody because I can't recommend you go and buy a new CPU and some RAM to get a, an upgrade in performance because for the most part, it's going to be almost unnoticeable. But have, if you've been hanging around like me, holding off buying one, waiting for prices to come down, you know, still hanging on for a GPU like I also still am, then you know, go ahead and, and get your CPU and your RAM. Again, this only applies to people in the same boat as me who had a 30 series, or 3000 series, sorry, CPU um, and can upgrade, and who was running 3200 megahertz RAM or maybe a little slower and can upgrade, although we'll talk about the RAM in a sec. But for the rest of us, you know, it might not be worth your time or your money. But I thought it was kind of interesting to see the difference and I thought I may as well share it with you lot. Um, but yeah, going back to the RAM, going from 3200 megahertz to 3600 megahertz made absolutely no difference in game performance whatsoever. Because um, the first thing I did was put the CPU in on its own and leave this RAM in to see what difference a CPU made by itself. And the CPU saw the gains that we see a minute ago in both Zero Calibre and the small increase in all the other titles. And then adding in the new faster RAM, um, setting the Infinity Fabric correctly, making sure the timings were as they should be and the voltage was as it should be. And it all stayed exactly the same. Now this is specifically in my VR games testing. If you were to do synthetic benchmarks, if you were to be running productivity tests, I'm sure having the faster memory will of course benefit you. But specifically in VR games, it didn't make any difference at all. I could actually have saved myself the 270 pound, that the, this is my old RAM that I waved around, but that the new RAM cost me and not, and not bought it because for my application, it didn't make any measurable in-game difference. So I suppose that's a little Bit of useful information if again you're in my situation and you're thinking maybe I should upgrade my RAM you know my CPU to get some better VR performance if you've already got 3200 megahertz RAM and it's decent RAM you know this HyperX stuff's pretty good running at a good good tight timings low latencies you're not going to gain anything by 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 upgrading the RAM you know but just just for that particular example CPU on the other hand as we just see in some titles does give us a good boost but um yeah, I just thought, kind of interesting, share it with you lot and, and 
you know, perhaps some of you in a similar situation might find it helpful or useful. And if you're not, you might just find it interesting. Some of us like to crunch numbers and see facts and figures and read benchmarks, even though we're not actually going to do anything about it. So one of those sort of videos. But yes, anyway, that's probably the end of it, really. Yeah, CPU was a decent little bump in some titles. RAM didn't really make any difference. The reason I didn't go for more than 32 gig, even though I was upgrading, is purely down to price. Nothing I do needs more than 32 gig of RAM. I could get away with 16 for the most part, to be honest. So, you know, spending all that extra money, another 200 and something odd pounds to double up on capacity that I'm not gonna use just seemed a bit pointless. Um, although now what I've got is the same capacity memory but slightly faster and I don't really even feel the benefit. But hey, it's one of those things I wasn't to know until I tried. You know, and maybe when I do eventually get a new GPU and so we're not so GPU bound, maybe my new CPU and RAM will actually be able to see more of its potential then. Who knows? We'll wait and see when I eventually get an upgraded GPU. Anyway, enough waffle for tonight. Thank you for watching and as always, take it easy.